welcome back. So in this video, I've taken some clips from one of my puppy training consultations where I was working with a little fella named Jock. Now, a lot of the time people think it's really hard to get dogs and especially puppies to learn a new behavior. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll see that it's actually super easy when you know how. Enjoy the video. So this is little Jock. He's a tiny little nine week old puppy. He hasn't done any training uh, on the leash or walking at all. And so this is his first attempt ever. And all I'm doing is using a tiny little piece of food and I'm sticking it on the end of his nose. And as you can see, I'm not using a leash at this stage. Stick it on his nose, pat a thigh, jump. Oh, good boy, 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 good boy. So what I'm really doing is I'm motivating him with food. I'm using a high pitched voice so he associates it with my word and an action. So here's the hand action. Jump. Now you may be thinking, what's that funny clucking, squawking noise I'm making? But that high-pitched voice, fast, repetitious sort of uh, noises, it really does encourage the dog and get them moving. It really does work. So you can see I'm almost starting to get bored. So I to get really excited and silly. So that's stage one, where we're using food but no leash no lead and this is where it gets amazing we're moving to stage two now I'm just creating a very simple uh, loop and I'm gonna pop that over his head and before he even realizes something's on him we're gonna do exactly the same thing and he won't even notice now notice how shorter distance I'm actually making jock walk it's only about two yards you have gotta be very sensitive with your puppy at this stage Give them a little bit of a breather, really use the food to tempt them along. Good boy, Jock. Very good boy. So again, I'm using loads of energy there. I'm only asking him to do a couple of yards. The worst thing you can do is keep pushing him too far until he gets a bit bored. You can see here he's got a little bit of an itch. So you just let it, make it easy for you, make it easy for him. And keep putting that food back on his nose. It's the food which is motivating your dog at this stage. You're needing to make it a positive experience. So, you know, if he's got a little itch like he has here again, just let him itch it out. Make it easy. And then always give him the rewards. Early on, you want to be using rewards all the time. And then I'm taking the leash off because I want to quit whilst we're ahead. Now, there's a bit of wind interference here, so I'll just voice over this bit. But all I'm saying is you want to take this off him. Um, before he gets stressed with the sort of leash around his neck so that he then starts to associate with a positive look I put it back on him and he thinks oh we're doing more of that great training where I get a little treat now this is what happens if you do too much you see how he started to turn and bite it that's him saying I want to get this off me because I'm not happy I think he's also a little bit frustrated with this itch whatever's going on but you could just see the start of him starting to say I don't want to do this anymore so let's quit whilst we're ahead it's a really really important point now, a common question I get asked regarding this sort of training is how much should we do? And a ballpark figure is lots of short little intervals. So, for example, you're much better off doing sort of five or six one-minute sort of training sessions rather than one big ten-minute session. Ten minutes is going to be way, way, way too much for a puppy of this age. And um, if we just run through what we did, we started off, remember, with Jock just being encouraged to follow us by patting our thigh and using food treats so that was the first stage then we did the same with a leash on him so we patted our thigh put food right next to his nose so the food is actually like a lure and then the third stage was no leash and we're just patting our thigh here he's actually following us the food's not right by his nose anymore so he's really come on a long way and they're the three sort of key stages really of developing a really good walk so there you go. Hopefully that's helped you with training your puppy to walk by your side. Now here's some clips from a much larger video of Jock's training, which is inside my site. It's just some clips of him basically socializing with my dogs. This is Peanut here. And as you can see, having a little puppy learn to socialize with big dogs is not always a bad thing. In fact, it can be fantastic, especially if you've got a confident wee puppy like little Jock here. So he's going to get corrected a couple of times. He's going to be learning the rules. Basically, don't try and steal the ball from Inca. She's my eight-year-old little whippity dog. This is a Jack. He's a one-and-a-half-year-old Catahoula cross. He's a very confident boy. And as you can see, Jock immediately knows how to play the submissive role. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. They actually get on really, really well. Jack is almost like the big brother to him, looking after him and uh, showing him the ropes. 
Okay, so I want to show you one more thing before we finish. It's basically the two different ways my dogs tell Jock to leave the ball. First of all, Inca, very verbal, very loud, and sounds scary. Look here. Then, um... Jack. Nice. So let me slow this right down and zoom in. There's absolutely nothing to worry about with this dog, Inca. She makes a lot of noise, but watch her teeth here. That's all she's done. She's just moved her head towards little Jock and made that very guttural growl noise, which, yes, is scary, but it's nothing. Jock gets the message. He knows it just means stay away. Training. That's being told. When I'm playing with a ball, don't try and take it. Yeah. You see how the big dog's a little bit more subtle? Yeah. A little bit gentler. Compare that to Peanut's approach. If you watch her right paw here, it goes out into the nose of little Jock, something you wouldn't even notice unless it was pointed out. Very, very subtle. So there's just a few clips from Jock's puppy training. Do get your puppy socialized as early as possible, and you can use larger, older dogs if they're well trained and well behaved. And as you can see from little Jock, he hasn't been bothered at all by the growling that he received. There was no intention to hurt him. So remember, if your puppy gets told to stay away in that sort of uh, manner, don't worry, don't panic. Your puppy will understand it. The last thing you want to do is overreact. Just stay calm. And as you can see, Jack's uh, training him up and uh, Jock's, Jock's having a great little time with him. So there you go, some simple tips on getting your puppy to learn to walk next to your side. Basically start without a leash. Just use food. Uh, develop your high-pitched little voice and pat your thigh. Give them that verbal cue. And of course, always remember, keep it simple and quit whilst you're ahead. Basically do lots of little sessions rather than one big long training session. So how cute was that? Now, if you've got a new puppy or if you enjoyed that short clip, then you'll be very pleased to know that I've actually captured on video the raising of one of my puppies called Moses from eight weeks of age right through to eight months old. And I've created a complete step-by-step -step puppy training program called Project Moses. If you're interested, then I'll let you know where you can find out more about it at the end of this series. Tomorrow, we're looking at something completely different, dog aggression. So make a mental note of that. Have a great day and let's catch up then.